Hey everyone, welcome to Matt's Garage. As you know, I've been setting up this 9-inch uh, ring and pinion, this Ford 9-inch ring and pinion with 411 gears I got uh, from Yukon Axle using the rebuild kit I got from Tom's Bronco Parts. Yesterday I spent a lot of time putting together this uh, ring and pinion for the Ford 9-inch. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes during that video, so I, I don't want to put bad information out there so there's going to be some cutting to that video and then cutting back to me because I don't want to put it the way I filmed it yesterday, if that makes sense, because I'd be steering people the wrong way. The first mistake I made was when I assembled my uh, carrier, uh, I ended up getting a lot of run out. A run out is just a fancy term for wobble. And the reason for that is I didn't um, take the care that I'm doing here afterwards, which is I, I pulled the ring gear back off and I took a machinist stone and very gently ran the machinist stone along the back surface of the ring gear to knock down any high spots and uh, make sure nothing's interfering with that sitting perfectly flush with the carrier. After that I turned my attention to the carrier basically did the same thing not pushing too hard I'm really putting minimal weight you can see there I'm pointing out um, other high spots that I was finding as I was doing this and this really helped after I reassembled it I got a lot less run out um, within tolerance I think it was like one or two thousandths on the ring gear. I also took that stone to the uh, surface where the carrier meets the pinion carrier it's a two-part carrier and then in this next clip you'll see where I actually pressed the bearing races into that pinion carrier. I went ahead and I pressed in the races on both sides. And to do that, you just use your old race and then, uh, you know, something big enough to push down on it. And that's how I get it. You can hammer it into, but obviously the press is preferable. Just pull the pinion out of the freezer. The bearings at 185 degrees. The question is, is this enough of a temperature differential? The answer is, oh, oh, oh man. Hot. That was more than, I don't think this thing works, man. This then goes on here. Great. Then crush sleeve. Then the other bearing. For the outer bearing, I took it to the press and I used a uh, old bearing race and a race to uh, and in a socket to press that in. You only want to go till it engages the crush sleeve. You really want to use the pinion nut to uh, to crush the crush sleeve. Where's my yoke? But once it engages that crush sleeve, even the 20 ton press really doesn't take the doesn't take the lash out. So I'm gonna try to do this with brute force. Might need a cheater bar. Some lash in there, see that? <laughs> Man, I made the classic error. Luckily, I thought ahead and bought myself an extra crush, uh, crush ring. But what I did wrong was. I had this, what I, I just laid on this hammer, basically, hammer drill, just brrr, and I got it to there's no play, and I thought it was still spinning freely, so it wasn't technically zero lash, zero lash is like when it spins and then stops, but now it just doesn't spin at all. So I've got preload on this now. So I either put too much and I can't tell from feeling it right now, or 
I nailed it and got lucky. So I'm going to take this, this out, mount up the uh, carrier, and try to measure my preload. But man, you know, they, they tell you it sneaks up on you. Once you get to zero lash, it is, I mean, that was, I would say it was less than like two degrees of total movement between zero lash and having preload. It's, it's really, it's next to nothing. And, and why is that important? So if you squeeze those, um, if you squeeze those pinion bearings too close together, it just creates too much uh, heat, basically, and you'll get premature, premature bearing failure. Twenty, and man, I hope it clicks. Wait, that's good, right? That means it's less than 20, because it'd be clicking. Is that right? I can't go less than that. All right, I need to get a different torque wrench. So I might be okay. I might be okay. But uh, man, sneak up on it, guys. Sneaky. Like, I went. After I got the lash, okay? When you get lash, it's got to be. That's it. You can't Brambo it. Man, this is a tough video to edit. I'm sorry. If this is your first time watching, I apologize for the Frankenstein, but I had to do this in a bunch of different days. I finally got my non-click style inch pound torque wrench and I ended up getting it to where it was in spec I mean I didn't over torque it so that was good and I was able to uh, I checked it a few times here and I think I was at 22 pounds or inch pounds or something so it worked out so now I'm going to put the pinion nose bearing in that is this little guy here okay, it drops into the pinion carrier from behind or from the pinion side great retainer these things are a pain I'm surprised the kits come with these I mean you know it's shocking actually let me just double check that this kit doesn't have a retainer in here. nope no retainer so, got to use what you got. It's got these uh, little tangs. These are locking tangs. They need, you need to make sure they get into the grooves. And I'm almost out of battery. Now we're going to set up our um, backlash. Little adjuster nuts in there. Okay, now. I don't have my spanner wrench yet, but once I get my spanner wrench, I'll be able to appropriately put the right amount of um, preload onto these bearings. I can't do it right now, so I'm gonna skip that step. Right now, I'm just worried about backlash. All preload means is you're squeezing these bearings to give some drag to the ring gear, okay? And it's a specific amount of drag. And that basically, you go until this spins, then you go two, and two, and that's your preload, meaning two two notches on your um, outer uh, nut here, and that's your preload. And now we're going to set backlash. Now I have a very minor backlash here, but let's measure it. It's at twelve thousandths. Okay. Yeah, still at about 11, 12. Great. Let's put some paint on it and run a pattern. Great. Now, 
You want to put some drag on this while you turn it, but. So you see the marking there? It's way out on the edge of the gear on this side and way deep on the edge of the gear on that side. So I have screwed something up here and I'm gonna play with the adjustments till I get it right, but it's a learning process. So I need to think about it, do some research. I can actually look at the patterns and the guide that came with the ring gear and figure out what I did wrong. So when you buy gears from Yukon, uh, you get this, it's pretty common, you can get this on Randy's Ring and Pinion's website too. But basically, you gotta pay attention to the angle of the, you gotta get your nomenclature, toe, heel, coast, drive, and all that, and then figure out, well, which pattern do you have? And I've got sort of a sharp, let me just double check here. This is the drive side heel. So I've got sharp on the drive side heel, which is that pattern right there, which says pinion is too far away. So I need to uh, take out some shims. This is at four, 47 thousandths. So I'm gonna take that down to like 04, 55 because it looks pretty far off to me so we're gonna go ten thousandths each time you adjust your pinion depth you got to check your backlash again in, in our case I'm, I'm at ten thousandths so you know it, it brought it down from I think it was 12 before by bringing the pinion in closer by ten thousandths I took two thousandths out of the backlash but that's still within spec so so you can see my mark it used to be way out at the edge and it used to be all the way over now now there's a sliver here where it's not making contact so it's that's moving deeper in that's because my backlash is getting tighter but this is also moving further down but still not enough and on the coast side it's it's still it's not all the way out to the edge anymore it's moving in so i i still have quite a bit of a i still got to bring this pinion in a lot closer all right i took a lot out of it this time i dropped it down to 375 thousandths just because I, I feel like i'm range finding a bit here so i want to make bigger moves and then back off there you go see that it's starting to move down into the into the gear a little more I want to be honest, I'm a little frustrated because I'm now down to the original shim pack size. So if I just use the original shims that came with the, um, that, that were on there, I would have been better off. So I'm down to like two, three, five, two hundred thirty-five thousandths. Um, my backlash is now down to six. But I think my spanner wrench tool came, so let me go get that. I think this one's gonna be close, guys. I hope so, because my ring gear is starting to look like a New York taxi cab. Look at that. Dead on. Perfectly acceptable. So I re-loctited all my bolts, reinstalled the ring gear, torqued it to spec. Now I'm just installing the pinion so I can get approximate backlash before I take the pinion back out, set my preload on the ring gear, then put the pinion back in and take one last reading. Gland nut wrench. Pretty stout, comes with two different sizes. I pushed the thicker ones out. So, I'm just gonna get this set up for my and that's here. Okay, I've, I've got everything back together and I've got a little backlash. I just want enough so I'm not making huge adjustments once I take the pinion out uh, and I set my preload on this, okay? So let's take the pinion out now. So there's, there's already some preload on this actually, that might be 
pretty good. I forget what the preload is supposed to be on. Carrier preload. Blah, blah, blah. I did this. Oh my god, my life is awesome. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I, I remember now. I remember now. You take out the lash. Let me put some lash in. Alright, so see that? It's been freely, right? Now it's got a little drag. And you take out lash and then you go two. One, two. Okay, and that's the preload. Almost to a load. So that's that's how much preload I need to have on my pins. Okay, so the preload is set. Now I can put my pinion back in. I have to admit, it is pretty frustrating. I mean, this has got to be like the ninth time I'm setting this thing up, but uh, yeah, it's part of the process. I'm learning every time too, so be patient, go with it. Hopefully this will be the last time, I, or at least I'll get really close on the shimming and I can start buttoning this thing up. Okay, I think I'm where I need to be. I've got an acceptable pattern. You know, I was getting frustrated because my pattern here was the correct depth into the tooth, but it was not the correct tap toe to heel. Then I reread the instructions. It basically says, don't worry about that. As long as it's sort of rounded at the edges and it's the correct depth in the teeth, you're okay, even if they're offset a little bit. It may not be possible to get a perfectly centered, perfectly deep, perfectly round pattern. So my instinct tells me I'm where I need to be on that. I checked my run out here by putting the, um, the depth gauge against the back face. I'm at like two and a half thousandths, so that's within spec. My backlash is at 10 thousandths. Um, I see different specs for that. It says between like six and 12. I'm at like 10, 11, so I'm okay on backlash. So this is set up now. What I need to do is put the stuff that I might forget on now. One of those things is the locks. And another thing is to make sure I put the O-ring on the pinion housing. So I'm gonna lock this down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna torque the bearing caps to spec. Now I'm just going to check everything one last time. Eleven. Good. So I took the old pinion nut off. That's what I had on this whole time. Put some oil on the seal here. Okay, I beat the snot out of that sufficiently. Pinion guard. Now this had come kind of bent, so I just need to straighten out these ledges. Oh my god. Alright, that's 150. I'm going to use the human torque wrench. That's not going anywhere. Again, a little oil. Let's get out of here. Move up the O ring. This will be much tighter than your fit up because of that O ring, so careful not to pinch it. Now these obviously aren't the permanent nuts. The permanent nuts are getting CAD plated right now, but it's done. All I have left is to put the RTV and drop it in and it's good. So, whew. Well, that's it. I did it. I set up a four nine inch, man. You can do it too.
You know, everyone says don't do it. I did it. Will it blow up? Maybe. Maybe it'll blow up. I don't know. But I did this whole thing, you know, with the Tom's kit and all the other little stuff I had to buy. 150 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. Plus the, I mean, I had to regear. You do that anyway. But I did all the work myself. I know exactly what it went into it, and I'm really proud, man. Even if it blows up. So. Let me know if you have any comments or questions, or if I did something terribly wrong. But uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, you know, a lot of the shows they do it, they, they gloss over things. They don't show you the work that goes into it. So I really hope this inspired you guys to go out and do your own gears. I'm also going to do a segment on the Dana 44. Um, and that's, uh, the, the, the concepts are the same, but the process is totally different. So look forward to that, and I'll see you next time on Matt's Garage.